In this video, we're going to look at creating PowerShell notebooks with .NET Interactive Notebooks in Visual Studio Code. So .NET Interactive Notebooks allow you to mix Markdown and executable uh, code or script um, so that you can kind of uh, provide great, rich documentation. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to install the um, .NET Interactive Notebooks extension and then we're going to create a PowerShell notebook and I'll show you some examples of what we can do inside of those notebooks. So I have just searched for .NET Interactive here and it's going to pop up this extension, which is the .NET Interactive Notebooks extension. And it's going to give you some information on how to get started and that kind of thing. So if we just click install on that, it'll download and install the extension. And what you're going to notice if you actually go back to your extension view is it actually installed a couple of extensions. It installed the .NET Interactive Notebooks extension and then a couple different um, Jupyter extensions uh, because Jupyter is what is driving um, kind of the rendering and execution of this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit Control Shift P and um, search for create new blank notebook. And once I click that, it is going to ask what type of notebook. I am going to create a, a DIB notebook. Um, that is the .NET Interactive extension. The IPYNB notebooks are the Jupyter extension. So uh, once you select that, you can select your default language. I'm going to click PowerShell. And now I have a PowerShell notebook. So there are two things that you can put inside notebooks. Uh, you can put markdown and code. So this is a code block right here. For example, if I were to do something like PS version table, um, save this. I'm going to save it as a notebook uh, dot dib. And now I have a PS version table code. And um, on the left hand side, you see this little execution button. And then when I execute that, it actually outputs that into this document. So what's really cool about this is that we can start to blend markdown and code so that you can kind of create interactive um, documentation. So if I add some markdown, um, I will just plop some in there. So you can see here I have a list, I have a link, an image, and um, save that. And to actually render the markdown, you're going to click this little checkbox in the top right. And now the markdown is being shown. Um, you can also clear the output. And this is kind of what you'd see uh, if you first open this notebook without executing anything. Um, mark, uh, notebooks are pretty cool because they actually uh, retain state. So let's add another block here. I'm going to call it state. And um, I will put some code in here. And I'm going to put a variable in there and save that and execute it. So now we uh, save some state into that variable. I'll add another code block that just outputs that variable and um, execute that. Now you can see it says hello world. Uh, the idea is that there is what they call a kernel running in the background, a notebook kernel, and that kernel is maintaining your state and it does things like provide IntelliSense and that kind of thing. So if you notice when I was typing inside my code block here, um, you'll actually get IntelliSense uh, from the PowerShell extension. Um, some things to note about notebooks. Uh, let's add another block here. Uh, I'm going to add a markdown block um, and we're going to check the PowerShell version. So it's not actually running in a, um, a kind of a standard PowerShell prompt that you'd think of in Visual Studio Code. Uh, if we put VS version table in here um, and execute that, you're going to see that it's running 7.2.2 on my environment, while what I actually have installed is 7.2.3. So that's the actual uh, kernel um, version of uh, PowerShell that's running the .NET Interactive kernel. So we'll clear that. And another thing to note is that this is not running in just a PowerShell process. So if we actually look at the process, um, I'm going to add some code for that. And we could do that by getting the pro calling get process and passing in the uh, PID or the ID of this current process. So if I execute this, you'll see that it's actually running in .NET. So it's not running in PWSH. It's actually a hosted version of PowerShell inside the .NET process. So we can clear that cell. Um, and do note that um, it is, although it's running kind of in this weird environment, it is running as your current user and uses a lot of the same, you know, PS module path and that kind of thing. So if you actually check that, um, we can see that the PS module path will be what matches in Visual Studio Code. Um, 
So I just plop that in there and execute it. You can see this is my PS module path. Uh, it's the same one that I would uh, load up inside um, inside PowerShell, aside from the fact that it has this additional path at the beginning here for their .NET Interactive. So if there's any like modules that are included with .NET Interactive, those are gonna be brought in as well. Um, and now just an example. I wanna provide a little example of how I would use this. So in my previous video, I actually talked about invoking REST APIs, and this would actually be a pretty good tool to kind of document what I went through there. Um, I'm actually gonna go into the notebook and I'm gonna open it with a text editor instead. And you can see that this is what the notebook file looks like. It, similar to Markdown. Um, it's just like the individual sections are actually uh, denoted by a pound uh, exclamation point Markdown or a pound exclamation point PWSH to say whether or not those sections are Markdown or if they're PWSH or PowerShell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this uh, pre-written thing that I have here and plop it in here and we'll save that and we'll go see what the notebook looks like. So now I have kind of an example. So this is what I would put in a notebook. I would put uh, REST APIs, for example, here, um, talk a little bit about methods and how to invoke those. You can see I've like put in some, you know, documentation around what's going on. I can actually click these uh, REST methods to go out and invoke these. I'm running like PowerShell Universal in the background. And you can see that the get method returns a get. We can get status codes. You can see here's an error of getting um, a 401 unauthorized. Um, I can send bodies up to my REST API, that kind of thing. So uh, .NET Interactive is pretty cool, especially with PowerShell support, obviously. Um, and it's really cool because you can share these then because they're just text files. So they're just kind of a blend of script and markdown. And uh, one good place to look for examples of what other people have created, uh, I would definitely check out uh, Doug Fink's um, PowerShell Notebooks repository. He's kind of put together a demo of like PowerShell 101 notebooks. So you could actually pull those down and see what those look like. So if you were like learning PowerShell, this would be a really cool, uh, you know, tool to provide someone um, to kind of step through examples and kind of they can tinker with uh, the PowerShell script. And I actually pulled down one of his notebooks. So if we actually go to this hash tables notebook, you can see this is a really good example of, you know, how you would document ex executable code in a notebook. So creating a hash table, you can see he's uh, creating a hash table and assigning it, you know, Jane 25, and then we can just kind of step through and see how to access it, see the keys that are available, how to access it by uh, the key, that kind of thing. So definitely go ahead and uh, pull down the new .NET Interactive Notebook extension. It's gonna, ex you know, it's gonna install a couple other things, and then you're gonna have access to these cool PowerShell notebooks where you can document your code uh, directly in the same file as your PowerShell scripts.